Okay. Um. Yeah. So I'm I'm just just working on uh. I'm I'm just working on uh. Tracking the the DigiKey parts right now because something weird happened at the university where they get forwarded somewhere else or something along those lines. Like I order on my account and it ends up on someone else's account. Um, so I don't have access to the dragging information. I'm trying to figure out where they're at, and hopefully they'll be here Friday. Other than that, um, everything is going well. Um, so I've been looking at other open source uh, mills. I think that that Cyclone uh, that Cyclone PCB factory is probably the most decent open source reference for what what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. That's um yeah, someone let me know about that just uh, I found out about it a few days before you emailed me about that. Yeah. That's pretty really? good. So so um and it's definitely open source. So I think we can learn all the code stuff like any uh, like the calibration stuff. I don't know how sure. much you've looked at that, but yeah. Um it sounds like uh sounds like you've been de debugging. I mean, did the did the like things not work as you as you thought on the initial boards and all that? Well, uh, things worked good for low voltage, but I, I just started uh -huh. to get up to a uh, higher voltage. Uh, what, what do you mean by uh, higher voltage? Like 120 or? Uh, once I got up to like uh, like 48 volts, as I tried measuring. Yeah. Uh, I they really started running into issues, and it okay. was just some oversight on my part that um, operational amplifiers they they have this thing called common mode voltage. And even though the signal's differential, so uh, it's across the resistor, so you just have the top voltage minus the bottom voltage. So, for example, if you have 120 volts, um, the the voltage that it's going to measure is maybe 118 volts and 120. So what it, it measures is a difference of two volts, but you still have 118 volts minimum that's exposed to your terminals, which was screwing. Which is burning up the circuit. Okay. Um, I developed a new circuit to work around that. So that's um, why you, you you didn't get the the circuit order in time because you had to rework it, right? You were you yeah. didn't yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's that makes correct. sense. And and I had some other uh, responsibilities for Dr. Pierce that I had to take care of other yeah. other research projects. Yep yep yep. Yep. Understandable. Yeah, I think we're in decent shape on. Uh, on a spindle and all that so all those parts are ordered um i mean everything i could think of power supplies and bits spindle okay. uh, designed i designed the spindle holder yesterday uh we're currently getting the full cad on this on a cnc circuit mill so that when we build it it's we're building off a completely worked out design so that should be good yeah. and i expect the main main challenge to be yeah, the, just the calibration, the workflow, and and uh, yeah. and and measure and like we need to talk about some some s steps that we take to get some real data on what the performance of it is really like. So yeah, so yeah, well, go Dr. ahead. Dr. Pearson's recommendation for that to actually measure uh, the accuracy accurately is to fast fasten like a digital microscope to it. So just something cheap off Amazon. Uh huh. So we want to invest in a little digital microscope? Yeah, that, that might be a good idea. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, do you have a link offhand? Or? I do not, but I can, I can hunt one down and I can just email it to you. Okay. Let's hunt right. down a digital microscope. So basically for going down, for the down travel, and for the side travel? Yes. I, I don't think... Uh, I don't know how you... I'm not sure how you'd fixture it for up and down travel, uh, but yeah. I, I think that's for measuring X, Y accuracy. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that when I was designing a mount. You can design a mount to to face like any direction. So um, I guess as soon as you get me that, then we can draw up the the mounting file for the microscope. Yeah. yeah. How savvy are you in making 3D print files? Uh. I would say on a scale of one to ten, maybe a seven. Okay, uh, what do you use for that? Fusion three hundred and sixty. Uh, no, I, I usually use OpenGL. Uh, 
open SCAD or uh, or Google or not, it's not Google SketchUp, but SketchUp. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, we can do that pretty pretty well, and Free FreeCAD's pretty good. So I think whatever we, how, how much uh, FreeCAD experience do you have here? I don't have any, but I think I would like to get some because okay. I think I would like that more than OpenSCAD. Yeah, maybe maybe like um, maybe we could get together and when you're here. Like if we got to design some parts, I can teach you. I think you can pick it up really quickly. I mean, there's some real basic key things you need to know about FreeCAD, but since yeah. you already know CAD, I mean, you're going to pick it up pretty quickly. Yeah, so, well, it, I've, heard it's, I've heard it's pretty similar to SolidWorks, and that was... Yeah. That was... I have experience with that. Too, yeah, so. yeah. No, I think I think it would be cool to, like, if we have to... Because I, I suspect we might have to be doing some modifications. Like, I mean, the worst case scenario is that we got to, like, modify the access system. Because right now, so just to let you know, uh, what I mean, uh, go to the D3D scenes. Have you seen that, the, the latest on that? The latest on what? The D3D CNC circuit mill, just the... Well, actually, the Where? document. Uh, can, can you link to that? Where would I find it? Yeah, yeah. Um, right here. Hold on a sec. Okay, uh, see that. So the geometry we're using is what you see in that picture on a, on a, in a working document, meaning we've got the double axis on each, and the spindle is attached just like that over there. between. Okay. Uh, but the idea is that because we actually have a two-belt drive system with GT2 belts, yeah. um, I'm actually expecting that the double drive is going to be quite favorable. Um, because it will kind of, it, it potentially would be like a twofold improvement in accuracy if things work like I think they would. Simply because you Sorry. got. Um, Wait, hold, hold up, hold up. Yeah. So you have a dual drive. Yeah. They're just, they're just mirroring, like. Yeah. Right. They're just mirror drives. Yeah, yeah, they're mirror drives. So you see, what you see is you see six stepper motors in that design. So you got two stepper motors on each axis. Uh huh. Um. And the only hack we may need to do, I'm not sure if, I know that the Z can be driven by two axes on the ramps, but we have the external, like a larger stepper driver here that we might need to connect up to um, drive the two axes on the X. Because we, we have, so the Y, currently we there's enough drivers on the ramps to drive both Y and both Z, like Z assuming they don't move a lot, but yeah. will we, ramps run two steppers for the x do you think that would be true or no uh i haven't seen that no yeah like you said yeah, normally it might it's just not. for the z axis um yeah so well i guess uh just a second let me look at this um so making the uh make uh, hooking up the drivers, uh, we, we might be able to uh, do something with just having other, uh, what are they, Palulu drivers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we might be able to uh, do that in order to mirror them. Um, or if you have any other type of stepper drivers. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, can... So, yeah, the, there will definitely be a little bit of hacking in order well, to make the, that. Well, the only option we have is to split the signal, uh, which... I don't know if it's. I mean, we can definitely go at slow speed, right? Or, or no? Yeah. Uh, does does slow speed actually take less power? No, uh, it doesn't, are right? Constant current devices because yeah, they have yeah, to. Yeah. They, they have to. Right. They have to so. maintain their their field in order to keep their location. So. Right. So even when a stepper is not moving, it's drawing as much power as if it was moving. Yeah. 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 That's right. Um. um yes, so yeah, that. It, I think, I think those controllers have some sort of uh, uh, they have some sort of feedback in them anyway, where it monitors its own current, and so if you have if you have two steppers on there, it's really gonna confuse it. It's gonna confuse it. Yeah. Well, unless you're guess. going. Well, unless you're going simply in parallel, right? I mean, parallel it means that it kind of sees one thing I, I i don't i don't think that'll work no 
Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. If you just, if you basically just soldered on another four pins uh, right in parallel with it. Um, yeah. But it... Why, why doesn't I, that work? I don't, I, I don't think it'll get a desirable response because you're going to have... You're going to have... Just a second. Let me I think about this. Well, seriously, thing. It's worth a try. Um, yeah, I'll, try I'll research out. that. I, I'll make sure I have the larger stepper driver prepared here because... Because the strategy yeah. for me in general was that we're just simply splitting the output of a single stepper driver if that stepper driver has enough current capacity. That was... Yeah. But that's you're saying that can't be done? You can't just divide current? Yeah, you can. That, that's... It's, it's pretty... Uh, pretty uncommon. I, I've... In... I know there's reasons, I just can't recall. Well, I know exactly. the one reason is, I mean, I know one reason for standard setups is that it doesn't have enough current, but once you have enough current, then I yeah, think that reason goes away. But I don't know, I'm going to, okay, I'll find out more about that, make sure we got that. that. That could be the only, that would be the only thing that could mess us up here right now. Because otherwise, it's like if we've got the the Cyclone circuit mill for the calibration stuff, uh, I mean, if, especially if we can use their their whole procedure, then that's that's easy. That that becomes that whole issue of how you do the workflow is is easy then. And then it's just about calibration with the microscope. So so like the brunt of it would be okay. How well are we moving? And now that's then there's a case of no load and load. So can you think of anything that we would uh, want to do to to test the response under load, like doing something like a spring? Or something where it's moving against the spring, so you're actually test simulating loads and accuracies. Well, because we should think about that a little bit. Can can we just actually have it mill? Like, can, can we? We test can it while it's milling. Um, we can, but then we're not really getting the you know the forces in any controllable way. We don't. You're you're. I'd like to be able to have a little bit of feeling for how much force we're applying uh, and how we're actually moving. Uh, um, so the only way I could, see, I mean, offhand, controllably, is you, you attach, create some kind of a 3D printed mechanism with a with a known spring, and then when you're pressing against it, you can measure how your motion occurs with that load of a given given force. You know, say use a spring of a certain well, strength. Well, so what's coming to my mind is, uh, you ever seen those like fishing spring scales? Yeah. And then, and then you could just you could just see what force is bottoming out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can simply like attaching a spring to one of the axes, but but I think we want to design that. So I, I'll think about it. Uh, do you have any time to um, do any of that work, or you're pretty strapped for time? I, yeah, for the next three days, I'm gonna be busy making okay. boards and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. As, as expected, because this, of course, uh, things come up like this, since this is yeah. prototyping. But that's good. Okay, so I'll try, I'll try to think of some, um, some force mechanisms. Can you maybe ask Dr. Pierce for his recommendations on how you measure the system under force? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I will do that. Yeah, that will be good. I'll, 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 I'll send him an email. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And other than that, I mean... I mean, look, the bottom line on a, on a belt drive system is the position positioning accuracy is 0 0.01 millimeter, according to yeah. our simple calculations. So we were good on that, but the question is that's under micro-stepping, and the question is when you do micro-stepping, you don't have a lot of force, right? The way it works, the, like the higher the micro-step, the less force you have, right? The, Correct. You're gonna, you're gonna right. have less torque, yeah. Yeah, so so we might have to step it back, like maybe to like four micro stepping, and if we have like, yeah, say 0 0.04 or like 0 0.05, uh, repeat repeatability. I mean, would that be, would that be acceptable or? Yeah, I I think so. Um, I think, I think that should be fine. Okay. Um, but it, it'll. It all it all come down to just you know the proof being in the pudding and seeing how accurate yeah it really is yeah yeah we'll just 
but yeah, I mean, the most important thing is if we can get some real data on, okay, this is what you actually get under these conditions, that would be the most important thing to get out of this, because I'm sure we can, we can hack this, um, I'm sure we can do, like, really optimize the belt drive system, given the basics of, like, the 0 0.01, that's 16 microstepping, so which means yeah. that just by getting larger motors we can overcome any issues like say there's like not enough strength and it's just not getting accurate sure. enough i mean things like that so we, right. we can definitely make it work so really want to make sure we get some data okay so, so there's the go ahead honestly, so that's that's what you're looking at is using a ramps board yeah and an arduino mega and yeah. just uh, ramps for more stuff yeah yeah okay so use the standard control for uh, what uh cyclone does i think they use ramps and and um, yep. marlin do they, yep. I mean, how much do they modify Marlin? Is they got a whole... I don't, I don't think they, they modify it much, or, or if they do, I'm sure they have, like, a fork on GitHub that we could just yeah. take straight down. Yep, yep, so we'll have to figure that out. And, um... Yeah. I got this one guy on our team who's, who's built the Cyclone, so I'll ask, I can ask him what his experience has been. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, cool. that's who, who I found out about this from. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So besides the digital microscope, um, I don't know anything else. Anything else we got to think about? You, you oh, all right. So, well, so this is second. So you've ordered, you've ordered drill bits, you've ordered end mills, and you've ordered V bits, correct? Yeah. And then, and then you also ordered the copper copper clad fiberglass. Yep. And. Um, and you've also got a fixture to hold the circuit board. Uh, the fixture, right? yeah, i got to look at that. That's a 3D printed structure. And yep. you're just going to use a Cyclone PCB one? Yeah, I was thinking of just using that since that appears to be working for them. Is that... Sure. Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. I think I think I'll bring mine, too. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. Bring, I'm just going to pack my Jeep full of crap. Yeah, yeah. Why not? No, I would suggest, like, whatever you think is going to be useful, it can't hurt. We'll yeah, prob we'll probably uh, use it. Yeah. Uh. Yes, and then I've got a lot of. Uh, I got to bring all my stuff also to calibrate and validate boards when I assemble them. Uh, okay. Do, do you have any experience soldering, like surface mount and all stuff? I've done surface mount before. Okay. Um. All right. Well, yeah, because I'm gonna bring all that stuff down to put the boards together, and I also I have a. I have to use a fairly big resistor in order to validate, um, in order to validate the the high current, uh, the high current boards. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you you have you have at least one building that's grid tied, right? Because I don't want to like drain all your batteries just calibrating things. Yeah, yeah, we've got um, only the house is off grid right now. Everything else is grid. We've got a okay. I mean, one we've got a big workshop. We've got Hab Lab. Uh, so yeah, we've got plenty of space, yeah, and and okay. I mean I mean yeah, electricity and plenty of electricity. We got okay. four four hundred amp service here, so that's not awesome. A, not a deal, yeah. Uh, another thing, is it okay? Can I ask for your phone number just in case yeah, I yeah. get like ridiculously lost in Maysville or something? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, let's see. Do let me see if I have yours in um, Shane. Okay, can you can you give me yours so I can put it in? I'll text you right now. Yeah, it is uh, one nine eight nine four two four one five zero zero. Do you have your phone there? Yeah, I've got it for next. Okay, time. so I just texted you. coming through to you yeah should be coming through to you um uh, just trying to think of if there's anything else um, so you're planning on monday arriving monday afternoon sometime um yeah i think i was at, i was actually gonna leave sunday but i think monday might work uh better for me um so yeah i'll i'll, I'll be there monday afternoon yeah um yeah and so also, so you said you've got Cat5 
cable you've got the connectors and you've got the crimps to connect them on um as far as the crimps i gotta check on the crimps make sure i got those um okay do you have the cat5 tool i we don't have the crimps no um, okay so crimps uh, you mean the plastic pieces and the tool yeah i, I don't i don't have any of like the the jack heads and i don't okay. have any of the crimps to crimp it i, I don't have well I don't have any of the materials to do that. Right. So as far as uh, on the boards themselves, you've got the female plugs on those, right? Correct. Yep, they're all female plugs. So you got the f female plugs. So we just all we're making is wires with both male ends, right? Correct. Or whatever we're doing. Yeah. So we just need yeah. the crimper. I'll make sure I got so, the tool and the uh, and the and the crimps. Yep. Yeah. And so um, what what. What I did is I I ordered a hundred boards, uh -huh. but I only ordered I only ordered parts for twenty five. Okay. Um, so uh, so we can hit all of your main stuff that you want to hit. Yeah, uh, yeah. I ordered some some high current, like I ordered like a four hundred amp sensor. Um, so we can get we can get everything at a minimum that you want, and then you can go go ahead and us uh, you can go ahead and pick out whatever else that you might want to hook up to. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah, as far as our our electrical panel on the house, we're actually working. I'm actually working on that right now. We're we're installing that as we speak. So we've got a few good representative loads, and it's gonna be it's like in progress. So we may not have all the loads accessible. I mean, the wire the whole house needs to be wired fully. Right now, we've got a a bunch of temporary loads that can be representative yeah. of the different stuff. Yeah. So, um, so uh, well, one, one thing I was going to ask, well, one of the things that I had to redesign for, one of yeah. the reasons why, is because the, the first board I had was designed for, uh, or not necessarily designed for, but it would only work with low side measurement. Are you, are you familiar with that term? Um, no. Um, so basically, if you picture if you picture a straight line where you've got your uh, you've got your source, and then you have your shunt resistor, and then your load, and then ground in that order. So that is high side measurement because your your shunt is before your load, and so that means that your common mode voltage is pretty much going to be your source voltage. Just so say you've got a hundred volt supply, you're pretty much measuring a hundred volts there. Or yep. if you do low side, you're measuring in the path to ground, yep. which means which means your voltage is zero volts because you're basically at ground. Yeah. Um, and so that's why the common mode voltage wasn't a problem. And so I was wondering what what kind of, I've got it working with high side now. So if you can do high side, you can do low side, but it doesn't work the other way. So are most of the measurements that you want to do, are they going to be high side, meaning that they're... They're measuring from source to load rather than from load to ground. Well, I mean, we, because the everything comes to and from the control panel, we can choose. Can we choose either or or no? Uh, well, how does that long, work? As long as as long as they're not like series measurements. Like if you have like a converter going to another converter going to a load, then anything in anything before your load is still going to be considered high side even if you're if you're on one side or the other side of some sort of energy converter that's oh, still see, considered high side yeah you know what i'm saying yeah 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 what's the use I'm, I'm not getting why the low side is useful anywhere where is that useful well, well so you can you can still measure current if you have like a nice simple uh yeah if and uh and so the why that's nice is because the circuitry is simpler because uh -huh. the common mode voltage is like zero volts. Whereas right. if you're measuring 120 volts, you have to have your circuit capable of handling 120 volts. So, okay. Yeah. So you can measure the current, but how do you measure the voltage? Just say you want to get power. The, the, well, yeah. So the voltage, that's, that's just, uh, that's just a resistor divider. Okay. Like so, power. You you asking whether you can measure current on the high side or the low side? Yes, I, I'm just asking what 
predominantly what side you're going to want to measure things on. Well, um, where do we get relevant data? Like, how much does this device take in terms of juice? I think you can, for a lot of these things, you can, I guess coming into the, I guess we have to speak about specific things. Like, say you got the solar panels coming out of the solar panels. What's that, the high side? Yeah, you probably want the high side because you're, yeah, you're going to have coming from the source. Um, and, uh, I mean, so... See, you're, you're still going to get the same accuracy if you go low side on something like that so, as well. So, power out. so you're saying like you can, you're saying you can choose to connect to one lead or the other lead from the solar panels as well, so you can measure the solar panels on the low side too? Yeah, it, it should work. Um, you, have, well, you have one thing that I'm a little nervous about, which is your, I think, 240 volt DC bus. Is that a thing? Uh, 240 DC, uh, we don't have that, um... I gotta, I gotta remember what it is. Uh, yeah, you got, you got 240, a, uh, AC. 240 AC coming out of the inverter. Yeah, so, um, so, I guess given that that's AC, it doesn't really matter if it's AC, you can't really have a high side or a low side. So, that's... So I, I guess I shouldn't even be concerned about that. So the the uh, that's going to be measured with an external sensor. I I bought an external sensor for the 50 amp 240 vac and then the 400 amp 24 volt. I have an external sensor for that. Everything else should be able to be measured on board. Um, and so the boards have also been completely redesigned. Well, they've been redesigned. And they have potentiometer on, potentiometers on them now, so that means that you don't actually have to change any resistor or resistances. Okay. Uh, you can just you can just dial it on potentiometers. Um. Yeah, I can't remember why I got on this. Oh, the, the yeah, the low side or high side. Um. Well, so it's not that big of a deal because they should work for both. Low side is less dangerous i guess so if, we, if yeah. we could do low side measurements that would be the most preferable yeah and is there a case where we sense. can't i mean i think we can use low side everywhere can't we uh so like lo looking at that drawing you've got like your 24 volt 400 amp that one couldn't you can't do low side measurement for that um you can't do for your uh how come? How come you volt. can't? How come you can't attach it to the to the this plus and minus? How come you can't measure that off the minus? Wait, hold up. Because it's continuity, circ okay. continuity, right? If you can measure it on the high side, you can measure it on the low side, right? Yeah, yeah, but um, I don't know. Don't don't worry about it, man. I think, um, yeah, yeah. I I don't know. Um, I think if that's an issue, I mean, I I do believe we can measure just about everything on the low side. I don't see why not. Okay. Um. um all right. Uh. So. Other than that, I don't think there's any outstanding questions I have. Uh, I guess I should ask, uh, so you have a kitchen at this place. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, is there anything else that I need to bring for living arrangements? Living no, there's there's blankets there and, um, and pillows and beds. So it's like a dorm okay. room kind of a setting. It's got a kitchen and bathroom there, so it should be good. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. So, um, so let me let me just look at the drive real quick, so I can give you an estimated time. Yeah. Uh. Raise bill. Um, so, 
So, I think I'm actually going to try and avoid driving near Minneapolis because it kind of scares the hell out of me because I'm not the world's best driver. Um, so, I think I'm going to go down 90. So, that's, that's an 11 and a half hour drive. So, 12 hours. So, I'm probably going to leave at... A, I'll probably leave at 6 in the morning, and that'll get me there at 6 in the afternoon. Uh-huh. Is it more convenient for you to arrive on Sunday, or... It, rather... it doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. No, do um, Monday. I think Monday's good, so... Um... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I'll arrive then. Um, and so, since, since I'm waiting for the boards to arrive, I think, should, should we be good? to just start on the uh, start on the circuit board mill getting things around for that right away but then once I have everything together for the uh, power meter then we can install that once it's prepared yeah so you want to start on a, on a circuit mill yeah I think I think that's what we're going to, we're gonna have to kind of rearrange our intended calendar a bit because the boards are take the boards are taking a while uh -huh, so you're saying what um... Well, let's see. I mean, do you want to, let's see, so um, do you want to take a couple more days to actually work on them in, in your comfort of your, your space, or uh, or you no, just want to come down think, here? No, I, I mean, the, the time, it's, the timing's still going to work, work out the same, and I plan on bringing all the stuff anyway, mm -hmm. so, um, and plus I already had the, the shipping address, uh, I already had it set to your place, so. Okay. Um, but the idea is because we gotta yeah. put solder them together first. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. If if you hadn't worked with that, that'd be an opportunity for you to kind of learn okay. some service model soldering, or if you got any other guys there. Yeah. Um, no, that that would be cool. So so do that, and then what you'll do is um. Uh, so. Let's see how 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 to budget the time. So do some work on a circuit mill and and do um, w while you do the boards or how how do we divide the what's the workflow there? Uh, I, I was just, I was just thinking uh, may, maybe split it up and okay. Like the um um yeah, that's what I was thinking. So split the late, split, split the work up. So I'll, I'll take the circuit mill. You take the more of the boards, or how? Sorry, uh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah, that that work that works as well. I, I mean, it. I I mean, so how many hours do you typically work a day? All day. Yeah, all day. Yeah. Um. So, I like I said, I was just thinking maybe four or five hours a day to put boards together. It's going to take probably about half an hour to solder and calibrate a board. Uh, so that's with 25 boards. Uh, so. Well, we, what we should probably do, like, like uh, make sure we don't run into any bottlenecks on the process, like in case, uh, can we do like a couple and then just get to test, get to um, yeah. install yeah, that? Yeah, that's, as... that's, that's, defi that's definitely an option as well. Yeah, we should we should do that so we we're, we're not doing like the whole batch and then so many days have passed and we find we might not have something correct on a panel or something. Yeah. So just do it like yeah. uh Yeah, do the what we should do is get you going like or get going, get us going on the install of the sensing stuff as soon as we can. Um so we make sure everything is going there and then Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so say, you know, say we're starting, we're going to start on Tuesday. Um, yeah, I mean, put together a couple of boards and then get you to the house and, and start on that. Isn't that how we want to yeah. do it? So, so just spend, yeah. spend an hour or two getting the boards, first board together so we can actually start rigging one up. Yeah. So, so the schedule, the scheduled shipment of these boards is the 20th so that means that they're probably going to arrive on wednesday um so so what do we have to do so, before that oh so you're saying we're not going to get them in time you're saying yeah okay okay yeah, so, so 
that's what I'm saying like all all day uh, all day on Tuesday yeah. we could uh, maybe start putting the circuit mill together. Okay. Do you, do you have? Uh, that sounds good. Is, is this is this going on an existing system or are we building the mill completely from top um, to bottom? I would like to build it completely from scratch since we've got all the parts. We do have a one okay. one frame that actually we can use that's got all the that's got some of the axes, but but we're doing a doubling of the axes, so we'd have to modify that. But it doesn't take a yeah. long time to put a frame together. It's forty five minutes, so we should okay. if we can we should start a new. Well, we should because we don't have any of the thirteen inch frames. We want to use the thirteen inch, so we get about five inches. Uh, five by five inch work area. The one we have is 16 inch, so it will be bigger and therefore not as rigid for our purposes. Yeah. So yeah, we want to. We, we do want to start from scratch, but it should be good. It'll be. Uh, I think it'll be pretty fast. So. All right. I gotta print out some more more 3D printed parts for that. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think. It'll be so an adventure. I, what's that? It'll be an adventure. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, what, what, other, what other projects do you have uh, going on down there? Do you have any other people there? No, we don't have anybody. We, we're just working on getting all the utilities finishing in the house. So, and besides that, I'm, I'm doing, as far as the work on the 3D printers, I've got, I'm putting together the 3D print cluster. Um, uh -huh. Torch table is a little later, so you, it's not here yet. But yeah, there's no people here right now. Okay. So just myself and Katarina. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to start cutting out some boards. Well, that, that's that's one other thing is I still haven't gotten to uh, designing enclosures, but you've got 3D printers there, so we can print off some enclosures just like just press print and let them go i think um, so uh, i gotta make sure I, I get extra nozzles for uh the lulz bots here and uh yeah yeah i'll make sure we've got a few of them available mm -hmm. okay um okay excellent Excellent. Sounds yes. good. So the only things to really is uh, I'm going to check on the crimp tool and then uh, digital microscope if you can think of send me a link yeah, and talk so, to Dr. Pierce. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually, so that's, Dr. Pierce has experience with that, so I'm going to ask him what they used um, just so I don't pick the wrong one or let's say it. So. Yeah, yeah, if you can uh, find it out, that's good. That's a good, uh, you know, good thing. I, but I, I need to talk to him because I don't get what the advantage, you could still measure pretty uh pretty accurately with a dial indicator i don't that's really what i was thinking I, w I was thinking why do you need a microscope because a dial indicator will probably I, get you what yeah you need. so he yeah he, keep, he kept telling me i need to use a microscope so i'm going to ask the rationale behind that yeah uh but if i it still might just be worth it to just do it with the dial indicator and call it good um, right, it's we got uh, enough resolution on a dial indicator, right? It goes to one tenth of a thousandth, typically. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. The one I've got is yes, one tenth of a thousandth. Yeah. Right. So um, yeah, bring that too. I've got one here, but bring that one too. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Um, All right. One ten uh, thousandth. Wait, what? One thousandth is twenty-five microns, right? Uh, so I have I have point zero zero one inch. Is what I have. That's one thousandth. Yes, that is one thousandth. I I also have. I have, I can't remember what they're called, I think they're called like deflection indicators that are more accurate, uh, well, if it's only one thousandth, that's 0 .02 millimeter, I believe, so that would be, it wouldn't be adequate if we've got 0 .01. Uh, so, so maybe that's, 
maybe that's where he's coming but from I thought the, I think the, the one I have here divides the it goes I mean it's got divisions after the 1,000th so you can read one ten thousand I think so but yeah but let's let's uh, I'll check on mine here if also what yeah I've got mm -hmm. and I'll, 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 and I'll talk to dr. Pierce about that in uh, in procedures for calibrating the load um, or not calibrating but just validating um, and so here's the other thing yeah if if we have the uh, the axis the axis mirroring um, that's that could potentially be a difficult thing that would would involve some somewhat custom circuitry. It, the, uh, the the you're saying the axis sharing you're saying? Yes. If if just hooking them up just in parallel, if that doesn't work, um, okay. Well, so, um, I've got a I, Rambo I, here I, as well. What's that? I also have a Rambo Mini. A Ram. Does that? I'm looking at it. it looks like it has. Um, how many outputs does that have? I never worked with Rambo. Look at it. I, I'm looking at it. It's got six steppers, right here. So that would be. Well, you also... know, we 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 could probably, uh, so we could probably at least add one more from the ramps by using the extruder, because the, the extruder is one of them. Um, well, yeah, but we're using it up already. So we've got right now. I've got Y one, Y two. Y two is on the extruder. Okay. Yeah. So we're short of one, because it's only got five total. Um, yeah, but I'm looking at this Rambo here. It looks like it's got six, six of the steppers. Yeah. So I'm going to look um, into that. Okay. Um, yeah, also something to maybe have in your radar eventually is I'm going to be designing custom motor controller boards for like essentially infinite channel. Um, so maybe one day we can adapt some systems to that. Because they're all going to be single layer boards, so you can replicate them in house. Okay, uh, that would be cool. And what's um, what does Melzi do? Do they have uh, adaptability to more steppers? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but the thing is, no, the thing is that I think Marlin has support for only five altogether. That's that's the problem. That the firmware is going to be the issue there. Uh, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'll, I'll look well, into that. I'll well, see, I'll see what uh, we got. I don't. Well, the, that firmware modification probably isn't going to be that hard because it is just mirroring something. So it's just a, it's just a matter of finding that, that line of code that says output a pulse, and doing that on another output as well. Uh, yeah, but um, did you, are you familiar with how Marlin? It's architecture. I I'm not. I've never really looked. Into yeah, it's it. got. I mean, it's got like. Yeah, I mean, there's one part that does the stepper motion control. Yeah, it's kind of beyond me right now because there's too many files. One is for the stepper. Stepper. And then they have like acceleration control and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure how transparent that is though because it's not. Yeah, I would say it's beyond me to do that right now, because uh, okay. the code is not. The, the problem is it's not documented. That's, that's the problem. Uh -huh. I mean, so it's I mean, quote unquote open source. Well, I mean, Marlin is documented for the usual stuff, but once you get into the unusual stuff, like modifying the how many steppers you got, it's you got to be savvy about. You got to know C. Do you know C? Yeah, I I know I know C. You got to do that, and uh, yeah. but you also got to know the like you got to really understand the. All the libraries that are involved. Yeah, it's yeah. and that's I, I, I haven't I haven't found documentation documentation for that. It was so ridiculous. Um, by the way, um, are you familiar with uh, one one practical question? Are you familiar with 
the auto bed leveling within Marlin, by any chance? I I am not. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, I think I think we should be able to uh, to reference. Yes. Uh, the the cyclone PCB. Cyclone. Yeah. Maybe what we should yeah. do is um, like the first day. Probably like if if I if I would start working on a mechanical, you you might want to start looking at making sure all the code, we you know download the code and start working on that maybe. Yeah, and um, get, just get all the electronics together. And yeah. Start figuring that out. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. So we divide mechanical versus electronics. So we got a dream team yeah. going on. <laughs> yeah. So I I just got I just got your text. Okay. Eight one six six four six three nine six eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. We'll we'll uh, we'll do that. Um, so, well, I guess what I was getting at is, I can, I can bring my circuit board mill down with me. Yeah. Do you think that would be worth packing if we say, well, we've got to have, we're going to have all these drivers in parallel, but we need to be nice if we had a board for it. Do you think that's worth doing? Well, I think yeah, I think it's worth doing in, in case we need to do something crazy. The question is how much okay. time we have, but if we've got two weeks, I mean, we probably, we might have the time to do that. Okay. Um, yeah, def definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely bring it. Okay. Even yeah, as a I reference, think. you know, just even to see it as an industry standard reference, you know, and as we yeah. get ours work, I mean, like possibly like if, we, if we've if we got the mechanical setups for measurement, I mean, we can like compare measurements from yours if sure. uh, just for reference and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, but definitely we, we might end up, I mean, um, I mean, if you can design something fast, then yeah, that would be cool. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. De design, like the design is probably the, at least the, for, for, some, for something like that, that's all just like signals and like having the drivers plug into it. So that's not going to be too difficult in the two day ship. I, I, well, yeah, we Amazon prime, okay. whatever parts we need and. If it comes down to that, yeah, so that shouldn't be that difficult. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely would be useful. I'd say, yeah, bring uh, bring all your gear. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, well, I think I'm going to get back to trying to cut some of these boards out and see. Yep. That sounds good. So we should be pretty good. I mean, with the way Amazon works, I mean, if we get into trouble with some things, yeah, we can always go to Amazon and buy our way out of trouble. Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes. exactly. So, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Awesome. Sounds so, good. Are, also, last thing, so you're still on board to cover my uh, driving expenses and all that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Yep. We'll do that. All right. Well, I guess I will see you on Monday at 6-ish. Yep, yep. Yeah, as long as you get here before night, which is 9 p.m., that'll be that'll be good. Um, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. I mean, you can get here later, but I mean, just easier to see in the daytime. So we don't have a lot yeah. of lights there. So, uh, yeah. All right. I will talk to you later. Okay, man. Thanks a lot. If anything comes Bye. comes up, let me know uh, or text whatever. Yep. Yeah, I think I think I'll just uh, I'm gonna email Dr. Pierce right now. Yeah. I think I'm going to uh, I'll just CC you in it so you can just have that right away. Yep. And what you're doing right now is you're actually milling milling some boards or what what are you doing right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the the uh, the splitting hub boards that have like the t the ten connections. Okay. Uh, so so we can have all of them go into one Arduino. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. I didn't order those boards because I only need three of them, so it wouldn't been wouldn't have been practical uh, to to order them. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Later. Thanks. Bye bye.